piles of junk, mostly boxes of old paints and scraps of picture frames. Mixed in were wires, cardboard, and some dubious-looking old clothes. George Stobart. Of course, Inspector. I see. Hey, sir. And you. That was Nave. We're required back at the gallery tomorrow for a crime scene reconstruction. Let me guess. Non-attendance is a criminal offense? You got it. The large dumpster was full of garbage. It was Hobbs's mailbox. There was a note hanging out. For a second, I debated the morality of mail snooping. It was a short debate, and I won. I don't think there's anyone home. There's a light on upstairs. Slasha. Not a sound. The horn wasn't working. I popped open the van's hood. The engine was held together by rust and dirt. Everything was covered in a sticky film of dirty black oil. Half the wiring wasn't connected to anything. It was clear why the horn hadn't made a noise. Neither horn pipe was connected to either the battery or the cab. I had found just what I needed, two lengths of wire. The 
engine bay was a mess. That wasn't worth trying. I used the wire to join the battery to the horn. I snipped the wire and I connected the wires from the cab to the horn. That wire wasn't long enough to reach between the two horns. There was already a wire connected to that. There was already a wire connected. A loose wire hung. If I had some spare cable, I could connect it to the other horn. That wire wasn't long enough to reach between the two horns. The wire was just long enough to connect the battery to the... Everything was wired up. The horn had power. I figured that should get Hobbs' attention. All right, hold your blooming horses. What are you up to with my van? Hello there. Uh, we fixed your horn. So I hear. Now, what are you doing in my yard? Sorry to bother you again, Mr. Hobbs, but... Well, that could have gone better. He's not exactly the friendliest of characters. I decided to give it another blast. For crying out loud, will you leave my van alone? Sorry. Just need a quick word, Mr. Hobbs. I had no idea what was in the letter. There was no point discussing it with Hobbs. Hello there. We'd like to discuss some restoration work with you. Then make an appointment. I'm busy. This Hobbs guy doesn't exactly like visitors. There must be some angle we can use to talk our way inside.
I decided to open the letter. Dear Mr. Hobbs, due to previous incidents, we are writing to inform you that we will no longer be sending models to your address. It went on to discuss Hobbs' temper and other alleged infractions, some of which still carry the death sentence in certain less sophisticated cultures. Interesting. This could come in useful. I decided to give it another blast. You two again? What is it this time? Afternoon, Mr. Hobbs. We're from the model agency. About blooming time. I'm on a deadline. You better come up. time you two showed up. Hello, Mr. Hobbs. I was just wondering if... Uh, 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 can it, Goldilocks? I don't have time for chit-chat. Just get undressed behind that screen. Undressed? That was the deal. An extra 20 quid because I need you with your kit off. The studio was freezing. And as for you, darling, no need to get undressed. I've got a vivid imagination, so I'll just use that. Either way, just go sit over there on that rug and give me your best belly pock floozy. That's perfect. Just hold it there. Nico made for a good distraction. I just needed to figure out how to get a look inside that portfolio. Wow, an old Boston Wang stereo. I hadn't seen one of those for years. The record had stopped. It was Jasmine Breeze by the Hairy Lobsters. Hobbs seemed to have a thing for 70s psychedelic jams. Burroughs, Dick, Rand. Hmm. Hobbs liked his literature heavy and paranoid. I didn't want to play around with the negligee. Those days are long gone. But I wondered who it did belong to. My, my. <laughs> if it isn't George Stobart. Maybe Piermont. Oh, my. You're... Naked? <laughs> of course. As an artist's muse, one often finds oneself on Belota. Now, George, don't be shy. Come here and give me a big hug. That day was the day the nightmares had begun. Trapped, smothered, choking on lavender. Uh, George, darling, pass me my robe. It's terribly cold in here. Oi, what are you doing with a blooming robe on? God help me, but you're supposed to be naked. I've got a deadline to meet. Well, you won't be meeting any deadlines with manners like that. And besides, it's freezing in here. Lady Piermont and I had met before. She was larger than life in every way.
Hey, I'm still drinking that. Excuse me, Mr. Hobbs. Oh, what do you want? You're supposed to be sprawled naked on that rug with the family jewels out. Yeah, well, um, about that. Could I just ask you a couple of questions first? Blow me. A model who's shy and chatty. It must be my birthday. I hear you did the restoration of that painting that got stolen recently in Paris? I might have. It's a fine piece. You can smell the pain in every brush stroke. Do you know a Russian called Madovsky? You know Madovsky? Everyone in the London art scene knows Madovsky. And everyone in the London art scene who likes their kneecaps knows when to keep their trap shut. Excuse me, Mr. Hobbs. What now? How about a top up, Mr. Hobbs? Well, don't mind if I do. Excuse me, Mr. Hobbs. What now? But I thought you were a restorer, but you're working on this painting from scratch. <laughs> well, yeah. Look, some clients uh, want a painting that they don't own, restored from scratch, if you know what I mean. Uh, no, I don't. Don't worry, sunshine. Ignorance is bliss. How long have you been using Lady Piermont as a model? Using her? I can't get rid of her. Yeah, about this naked sprawling... Oh, what's up? Afraid of the shrinking effects of a cold warehouse? No, it's just... First time? A little embarrassed? Well, if it helps, we can all get naked. No, definitely not. Well then, what are you waiting for? Let the monkey see the nuts. We had a saying in the Stobart family. If a job's worth doing, then do it with your pants on. Are you sure you won't talk about Madovsky? Are you deaf? I already told you to drop the subject. How about another whiskey? Thanks, but I've already got a glass full. Hey, leave that dial alone. The heating gobbles up all the power and the circuits can't take it. Sorry. I turned the thermostat down again.
Oh, you. Get down from there. It's private. Oh, sorry. Turn the volume up if you want. Stop the car! I want to get it! Stop meddling with that. The power's ropey enough as it is. Blowing the power would certainly have distracted Hobbs, but the elevator alone wasn't going to trip the whole system. Lady Puma. Oh, George, be a darling and sort the heating out of here. I'll see what I can do. Hey, I told you, don't mess with that thermostat. Sorry, but Lady Purmont is cold. I thought... Look, pal, I know it's brass monkeys in here, but the wiring in this building is ancient, and the fuse box won't take it. Her Majesty will just have to get used to chapel hat pegs. Lady Purmont, Mr. Hobbs won't let me turn up the heater. Well, we'll soon see about that. Oh, if you do not adjust the heating, I shall refuse to cooperate. Lady Piermont, it's the circuits. They won't take the strain. You know what old buildings are like. In which case, I see no reason for this session to continue. Well, whoa, Lady Piermont, let's not be too hasty. I'm sure I can accommodate your needs. Good. Perhaps you can start by letting George here turn up the heating. Oh, oh go ahead then, but be careful. The power in here is uh, temperamental. I'd turn the thermostat up as far as it would go. I wondered if the suspicious wiring could be used to my advantage. How about a tap on Mr. Hobbs? Fast slashes. Far away. A word if I may, Lady Fremont. For you, George, I'm all here. How can I help? Lady Piermont, we need your help. How thrilling! What do you need? Subterfuge? Measure the name? Um, actually, I just need you to step on that lift behind you. Oh, 
but the cold. Is this good, George, darling? Perfect. Now, just stay right there. Now was my chance. Hobbs was good, but no way was he going to sketch me in the mood. More of Hobbs sketches. The model looks familiar. Impressionist sketches. Well, it wasn't the Melodixio, but it did appear to be a study for an element of the painting, the Ouroboros. There was something different about the image in the center. I figured the sketch might come in handy, so I took it. What the heck? I told you that portfolio was private. Huh? Well, that was fun. Just like when you were a private dick, George. So, you're not model? No, Mr. Hobbs. Well, you can't be a copper. You're not stupid enough. So what the blazes are you doing in my studio? We're investigating the theft of La Maledictio. I told you, I just restored it. That's what I do. Restore paintings. And these sketches? Studies done during the restoration. Nothing more. I've got now to do with what happened after that painting left this studio. How was I to know it was going to get Henri killed? Hang on a second. How do you know Henri's dead? He and I went back a long way. The Lézard Bleu was on the ropes, so I got the painting into his exhibition. Nothing like this was supposed to happen. But something did happen, Hobbs. Your friend lost his life. Look, I'll help you however I can, but this mess is way above my pay grade. What do you want to know? How come you needed to make so many sketches of the painting to restore it? Restoration is not about throwing a lot of paint around. It, it takes research. The surf is a complicated painting. A lot of subtext. A lot of symbols. Why would anyone want to steal La Maledictio? It's not exactly a famous painting. True, but there is something special about it that's hard to describe. There's conviction in every brushstroke. Whoever El Serp was, he had a tale to tell. The symbolism is deeply religious. We have reason to believe that Madarsky is mixed up in a theft of La Melodio. Eh? <laughs> what would he gain from stealing his own painting? We have strong evidence that Madarsky is not the real owner. He'll have a hard time proving that. Medovsky has a full set of provenances for the painting. It traces its legitimate ownership all the way back to the painter. Why didn't Madovsky mention it? Because they're not with him. Henri's got them, or had them. And Henri is dead. So that's his partner. Lane? Lane, yeah, Lane. Look, pal, you're wasting your time looking for conspiracies here. And you're wasting my time if you're not actually going to get naked. Go get the provenance from Lane, and everything will turn out hunky-dory. 
but it also puts Marquez's story into question. Not my problem, darling. Now both of you, get lost. I've got a painting to finish. And we have a critic to interrogate. Someone's lying, but who? Is it the gangster or the old Spaniard? The painter or the art critic? I need to head back for Nave's reconstruction. What about the evidence from Medovsky's house? Will you give it to Nave? I think I should. And I can put the squeeze on Lane. Ask him about the provenance. Good. I've got lunch with Ronnie tomorrow. This story is hotting up, and I want to make sure he keeps me on it. Taxi? <laughs> <laughs>